Was it a morning like this when Mary went to the tomb? In John's account, it is still dark, and she was by herself. It doesn't say that she was bringing spices because according to the verses earlier than this passage, a mixture of aloe and myrrh had been put on Jesus' body as it was being wrapped and prepared to be placed into the tomb. So what was Mary Magdalene doing on this quiet, dark morning at Jesus' tomb? Well, I suppose you could ask the same question of me. What was I doing here at East Lawn Cemetery on Wednesday morning at sunrise besides taking pictures? Well, cemeteries and tombs are places where we lay the bodies of people who we have loved after they have died. It is a place we go to remember them. Sometimes we feel closer to them there. Sometimes we feel like we can talk to them, even though we know it is only their earthly bodies that are buried there. Was that what Mary Magdalene was doing? Going to the last place where she had seen Jesus to be with him, to talk to him? I'm pretty sure she didn't expect to see him there. When we go to a cemetery, We are not surprised by what we find there. Well, there's grass growing over the graves, headstones, flowers, sometimes other items are placed there. But Mary Magdalene was surprised at what she found. The stone that had been placed in front of the tomb was rolled to the side. This was completely unexpected and unusual. And that was only the beginning of the unexpected and unusual happenings that day and in the days to come. Hmm, unexpected and unusual. Boy, can we relate to that right now or what? This time we are in of staying at home, of keeping physically distanced from each other, of washing our hands more than at least I can ever remember doing during the day. And yet... Today is Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. Christ is risen ah, yes, I had some responses here, and hopefully you responded at home. We have journeyed through Lent. We observed Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. And since we as Christians know that on the third day Christ rose from the dead, it is totally expected and normal that today we are celebrating Christ's resurrection. What may not feel normal is how we are celebrating today, and Clayton already talked about that a little bit in our welcome. For us at Heston Mennonite Church, we did not have our Easter brunch in the community center prior to this worship service. And and this was going to be my first one. I was so looking forward to it. I'd heard the wonderful food and fellowship that happened, and just thinking about what it may have been like makes me miss it, and I imagine some of you missed it too. We also did not go through some of the cultural rituals that we are used to doing in preparing for Easter. Well, some of us like to buy a new dress or a new outfit or new shoes. Some of us probably did buy candy, but maybe not as much as in other years because our Easter egg hunts will be small. There will be no large family gatherings to cook for or anticipate or dread, as the case may be. I hope not. The menus may be the same, but likely not quite as much food. There is the possibility that this will be the quietest Easter we have ever known. Well, it sure is quiet in this sanctuary. So very quiet. As a friend of mine suggested, it may be much closer to what the first Easter was like and probably for some years following. Would you imagine with me for a moment 
the quiet the disciples may have been experiencing that morning. They were together as they had been since Jesus' death, and I bet they weren't saying much. They were still reeling from the world as they knew it, being gone, destroyed, crucified. They not only lost their leader, Jesus, but their teacher, their beloved brother and friend. They were also reeling from the trauma of his death. I don't know what they thought of Mary leaving before sunrise or or if they even knew where she was headed, but I bet they didn't blame her. And it didn't take much for Simon Peter and the beloved disciple to race toward the tomb after they heard what Mary had found when she reported back to them when she returned. Hmm, let's pause for a minute there. Simon Peter and the beloved disciple. Where did we last hear from them or or, or see them or know where they were? One writer notes, Peter's inclusion seems odd. Does Mary or anyone know what Peter did in the courtyard? The last time he appeared, it was while denying Jesus three times. In contrast, the beloved disciple stood by Jesus as he hung on the cross. These disciples raced to the tomb, their presence together already signaling Peter's future reinstatement and Jesus' gracious forgiveness. There is room for both faithful and failing disciples in the family of God because of this forgiveness and love, end quote. When the beloved disciple and Peter arrived at the tomb, was it like this? Likely quiet, but were there sounds of a world waking up from a night of sleep, a night of darkness, such as has never been known before or since, thanks be to God? Were there birds singing? Was the wind blowing? Was creation itself waking up in ways it hadn't since God brought this world into being? Peter and the beloved disciple may or may not have noticed. I tell you, I sure have noticed the signs of spring this year. Daffodils and tulips are blooming just just like these. They are so beautiful. The grass is greening up. Trees are in full bloom. All of creation is proclaiming the power of the resurrection to us, reminding us that no matter what is going on in our world, there is no greater power than the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, which is why the tomb was empty when Simon Peter and the beloved disciple arrived there. They both went in and saw that Jesus was gone. But they didn't understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. So they went home. But what about Mary Magdalene? We can assume she followed them to the tomb, maybe at a distance, but instead of returning home, she stayed. For again, it was the last place she had seen Jesus. This time, she looked into the tomb and she saw the angels, kind, caring angels, who asked her why she was crying. And she was crying. She was so sad and grief-stricken and distressed. She really didn't want to enter into a conversation with them. And she turned away a bit. And then there was someone else, again, asking her the same question the angel had asked her. Probably was the gardener. And so she said, well, 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 Lord... My Lord, they've, they've taken away, and I don't know what they've done with his body, but, but will you please tell me, and I, I will take care of him. And she is weeping. And then she hears a voice, a voice she's heard a thousand times before. 
a voice that says her name, and it has never sounded as sweet as it did in that moment. Mary. (gasps) Rapponi. And Mary's tears turned to ones of joy, and she and Jesus embraced. And before she could ask him all the questions that were welling up inside her, Jesus tells her that they must practice some physical distancing. But he has a message for her to give his disciples. Mary is so excited and eager to get that message to the disciples. She is filled with joy. She runs back to them. But they are still sad and grieving. Can you imagine their responses of disbelief, maybe even anger, at what Mary says when she delivers Jesus' message? What do you think they thought when she said, I have seen the Lord? We don't really know how they responded. But I believe Mary kept saying it, kept announcing it, kept proclaiming it. I have seen the Lord. And we are called to do no less. My brothers and sisters and friends on this Easter Sunday, in a world that is experiencing unexpected, unexplainable illness and death and fear and is facing many, many unknowns. Jesus has given us a message to proclaim. He is risen. He is the resurrection and the life. Jesus was crucified. He died. He was buried. But he conquered death and is alive. Second, this God with this amazing Incredible resurrection power knows your name, knows my name. Just like he knew Mary's name, he knows us and loves us in ways that we cannot even imagine or even understand. And God, this God who loves us, calls us to himself so that we may say, I have seen the Lord. And we can say that to anyone around us that we meet. I have seen the Lord, and you can see the Lord too. We have seen the Lord on this quiet Easter Sunday in the sunrise at the cemetery. We have seen the Lord in all creation around us that has continued in the growth of spring. The coronavirus did not stop, did not cancel spring. We have seen the Lord in those who have given themselves tirelessly in the medical field day after day, caring for others and anyone else involved in that work. We have seen the Lord in people extending a helping hand to others around them and doing it creatively. And some people are meeting up with others in ways they never would have otherwise. I have seen the Lord in you, my brothers and sisters, as you have reached out to each other and made phone calls, bought groceries, shared food, sent texts, drawn pictures and sent them to each other made porch visits. Keep it up. Keep being the hands and feet of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, what we have done this weekend, what we do today may be different from what we are used to doing at Easter, but Jesus is not different. Our resurrected Savior is the same. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same. We can live each day of our lives in that same power if we believe that Jesus is risen. When we believe, we can face each day without fear. 
and with assurance that the living Jesus is always with us. And then we can share with others in whatever way possible, in whatever way we can think of that, no matter what is ahead for each of us, no matter what, we will continue to see the Lord. Let us go forth this day, continuing to see our Lord and trusting in the resurrection power of a God who lives. Hallelujah. Amen.